Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today, we are going to flash back to the time of happy days. And we're gonna chat with Erin Moran. So she's the actress most well known at, for her role as Joni in the television show, Happy Days. Also, she was also on the spinoff series I think it was called Joni Loves Chachi. I think that's what it was called. So we got a lot of things we can talk to her about. And I've been wanting to channel you for a while, Erin. So I really appreciate you being here. She's sitting here right off to my side here, really close. And um, her hair is black, a dark, dark, dark brown black. She's uh, almost black, she says black. And it's curled like in a perm-like setting. And she's got the makeup on from I don't know, the late 80s or something where, you know, it's brighter. It's like rosier cheeks and like the blue eyeshadow kind of a vibe. Do you know what I mean? Um, late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, early 80s. Late 70s, early 80s. Yeah, early 80s. She says 82. 82 to 84. 82 to 85. 82. 1982 dash. 1984 into 85. I'm not sure what she's showing me. I'm not sure what the relevance of that time frame is, 1982 into 1984-1985. So, Erin, I know that you're well known for your role as Joni, so I'd like to chat with you about that if that's okay. I'd like to start there because the viewers will be able to connect with you at that, at that point in your life. You know, you're a young actress. So tell us, what was it like to play Joni on the TV sitcom Happy Days? She says, it was good. It was a good opportunity for me. And it's not something that I take lightly. I recognize that it was an opportunity for me. She says, I was frustrated at times. And she's making me feel like, so the other people on set, was there a frustration with the other people on set? Not really, or not necessarily. It feels like it was conflicting with things. Like, I don't know if it conflicted with school or if it was conflicting with other opportunities. She just said other opportunities. See, she says, once you're known as Joni, you know, the girl next door, the little sister, you know, it's, it's hard to get other roles that are more serious that, or dramatic roles that you might want to play, might want the opportunity to play. And she says, she's showing me that she was in some movies or saw a movie that looks like it's got like the cars from like the 70s and 80s, you know, the huge, long, big cars. And it looks kind of dark and a drama kind of movie. I think it's a movie. It might have been a TV show. I think it's a movie that she was involved in or that she was in. And she says, but a lot of the roles weren't real serious, dramatic actress roles. And any actress would tell you that you want the opportunity to really explore all those sides of yourself and, and really share your talent, she says. So did you grow up wanting to be an actress? She says, yes, in Hollywood, everyone. Everyone, doesn't everyone, doesn't everyone want to be an actress? And she said, I did theater and um, she's showing me like commercials and things, like she was active early on. Um, her mom was real involved in her life and I'm not sure if it's that's a positive relationship or not it's a little bit unclear to me whether I don't know if I feel like mom was helping to do the Hollywood thing like the modeling and, and that kind of thing or if mom was not for it it's one or the other I can't tell the contrast energy vibrationally and I feel like I'm getting this vibe of like a small town like Indiana Ohio something like that like a smaller town um and limited opportunities and I feel like dad might have been in business or the business lost its, he lost his job or the business didn't go well or something about the business. And she's showing me that she has siblings as well, younger, looks like younger and maybe an older, might be an older brother and then younger siblings. Now that's on the TV show, you were the youngest, but in real life you were not the youngest. Okay. And then, um, if you know her hometown, go ahead and put it in the comments below. I don't know because as you know, if you watch Above Life channel here, I don't Google, I don't look stuff up. You guys can do that. Um, that's not the point of the channeling. It's to get information, insight, energetic connection about life, you know, reflect upon life and the lessons that 
Aaron Moran could share with us today. And there's a lot of them, I'm guessing. So what was it like to work with Ron Howard? I mean, now he's this huge director, producer in Hollywood. And did you have any idea at the time that he had that much talent or that that was, you know, going to be a thing? Like, could you see, foresee that? And she laughs. She says, Richie. <laughs> Richie Cunningham, right? She says, he was a good actor. He was a good, and she says method actor. He was a good method actor. I'm not sure what that means, you guys. If you know, put in the comments below. But he, she said he was a good method actor. And she said he definitely, you could tell, she says, now, she says, now, now understand that. She says, I was younger. So looking back now, you can tell, she says, you can see signs that he would be successful, she says. And just the way he could see a scene and lay it out and like want to change a few things, like if, like, I'm going to stand over here, or I'm going to let's try this or let's try that, that it was sort of natural to him, she says. So you can see, she says, you can see that now, but as a, as a kid, as an actress, I wasn't really, I wasn't really paying much attention to that, you know? And she says, she's showing me hanging out with the crew, like having some, um, contact, a lot of contact with the crew, and I don't know if that was a big deal or what. Um, is there anybody else, you know, like Arthur Fonzarelli or your mom or your dad on screen that you want to chat with, chat about? Potsy, I don't know the name of the actor of Potsy, but she's saying something about him, like having a crush on him, it looks like, and I don't know if that was actually, is that actually part of one of the, is that one of the, the things for the Happy Days? Did Joni have a crush on Potsy? I don't know. I don't know, but she's saying like crush on him. And then obviously Scott Bayo played Chachi. So can we talk about that? Because you also had a spinoff series when Joni, I think it's Joni loves Chachi. I want to say when, but I think it's <laughs> Joni loves Chachi. So can you talk about that? Like we're acting with Scott Bayo. He's so different now, she says. He's so different now than he was back then, you know? He wasn't nearly as religious or as straight-laced, so to speak, as he, when he was younger, it was different. You know, she said it was different. He, he was definitely, um, she says he was definitely, it's like motivated. He really want, he wanted to be successful. He wanted to be famous. And I don't know that playing Chachi really could give him that opportunity, but he definitely had other, op he had other options. You know, he was considered more of a heartthrob. And in those days for the, the guys, it was easier than for, I think for me or for us as actresses, there's much more pressure on us. And being seen again as the girl next door to try to translate into a movie role that's like a serious role or being seen as a sex symbol wasn't really on the map. So when we did the spinoff, The Joni Loves Chachi, it was sort of an opportunity for me to break away from the little girl next door and become more of a, a sexy young woman and, and then hopefully lead to other opportunities for, for film in particular, she's saying, for film. All right, and she said, and I sang and danced, she says. She's showing me that she's uh, skilled in other areas. So she sang and danced. She could sing and dance. She says, not, maybe not fabulous, not great. Um, but she shows that she must have taken some classes to expand her, um, her repertoire, so to speak, of skills and talents. So to make herself more marketable, she took other things like voice singing, and, like musical stuff. Like she's showing me musicals. I don't know why that is, but. And she's telling me she liked Judy Garland. Like she was inspired by Judy Garland and The Wizard of Oz and some of the other works. And then she says also Audrey Hepburn. So she's saying Audrey Hepburn and Judy Garland were two actresses that she looked up to. And then she just made a comment about Doris Day who just transitioned. At the time that I'm recording this video, it literally is like two days after uh, Doris Day transitioned into the afterlife. And so this is May 2019. So she's mentioning Doris Day and I think she's mentioning it because she's in the afterlife now. So Erin, if we could, let's chat about your transition into the afterlife. So I understand that you had some difficulties, some emotional like challenges and 
and difficulties and self-medicated maybe? Did you have some addictions? She said, yes. Um, yes, she says, yes. Uh, emotional disorders almost like, emotion, okay. She's saying emotional disorder. So like there's not, things are not all working together in her mind, she's saying, but she's not sharing being diagnosed with anything, but she's showing that she used alcohol and drugs and the drugs is what really messed her up. She's saying the drugs is what really messed her up. And she said, but there is so much pressure. She said, I put so much pressure on myself. And then she said, and I was, and she's saying I was raped. She's saying that, Aaron Moran is saying that. Um, and not that that, you know, is an excuse to um, mistreat myself and um, abuse myself having that, having that kind of thing happen to you, she said, it changes you, you know, it changes you, you just can't get right. And she's referencing the Me Too movement. So it must have been somebody, and she's also showing me that she had like a crazy fan, like a stalker fan, and that that's really scary. But I don't think it was a fan that, no, she says, no, it was someone older than me, and it was uh, Hollywood related. And so she says, Me Too, that's what she says. So... And then she says, don't let those people take your power. Don't let people, even if they are in a position of power and they can uh, they control, try to control you or abuse you or mistreat you, she says, don't let them take your power. You can still, you can go through really terrible things. She says, really terrible experiences. And you can come out in it intact. She says, with integrity and with your soul, they can't take that. They can hurt you physically, but they can't take your soul. Wow. I didn't know that. I had no idea about that part of your life. And she said it was difficult. She said I had a hard time. There were times when it was hard to go to work. And, you know, so I was so, she said I was so messed up or out of it that I couldn't work. So you were doing drugs or alcohol. You were self-medicating during the time that you were, record, were filming. So which series? The Dhoni loves Chachi. The Dhoni loves Chachi. Okay. And so, Aaron, did you actually, did you have an overdose for your death or did you commit suicide? And she says, they're pretty much one and the same, aren't they? I'm, yes, thank you for acknowledging that because I have had trouble lately, you guys. Really feeling the difference between someone that had an addiction and just had an overdose, an accidental overdose, and the energy of suicide, like taking pills on purpose to try to kill yourself. And... She's saying, um, I'm trying to feel the difference between them. It's really hard for me to do that, Erin. So can you, can you show me specifically? She shows me being at the hospital. So I think that more than one time she either overdosed or did attempt suicide. And then she shows me like trying to get help or counseling help, counseling. I think it was like an intervention or something. I see both though. I see addiction and I see suicide and it's like hand in hand. So I can't be sure you guys, I can't be sure how she died. Um, and she said she had a lot of bad influences around her too. It's really true, the relationships that you have. And she said, I'm not blaming anyone. We can't blame anyone for our own actions, our own choices, but the relationships you have really do impact you. It really does influence you. So I would tell all the young people that, that pay attention to the people around you. Do they have your best interest at heart? They may not. So you need to look out for yourself. You need to really do what's healthy and right for you. That's the, that's the advice from Erin Moran in the afterlife. All right, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, thank you for taking the time. All right, you guys, this is Bridget. You have been watching a channeling video with Erin Moran, Joni from Happy Days. And I hope that this video, as always, has inspired your spirit, given you some hope. Because this, the whole point of all these conversations is to encourage you to live your life because this after all is your life so live it just live it thanks so much for being here thank you so much for watching